in their room on the family Macintosh set up on a table by their bed. Mom retreats into the room. In a huff, she starts venting. He is wrong. I am right. I stand up for him. Dad and I get along better. He yells less. Red-faced and pissed off, she says. Why are you defending him? He's not your real dad. Her face changes. She is scared. I run to the living room to talk to Dad. I tell him what she said, expecting him to say it's not true. His face changes. He is scared. I don't know what to do, so I run. I run down the townhome stairs, over the piles of shoes. Barefoot, I keep running until I stop by the pond. I have nowhere to go. I walk back. And that was how I found out. I speak to a new uncle and a girl cousin. They say they want to see me. The plan is made, but never happens. I am told that my birth father thinks he will be asked for child support. He does not want me. I don't want him. I didn't want him to exist. I didn't ask for this. I'm different. I don't trust. Everybody knew. I already have a dad. Mom is my problem. No end. Repeat. Co-host of a wonderful podcast, which I've been on, Who Charted? It's on Earwolf.com. Kulap Valaisak. It's time for Who Charted, where we use the weekly charts in music and movies to get to know our guests. Up one to number five, Jason Derulo featuring 2 Chains. Uh-oh, the dance team is up. What is your names again? Too hot to squat. Too hot to squat. But all we do is yeah. squat, though, is the <laughs> weird. Yeah. Sometimes like we it. just call it too squat, though. <laughs> <laughs> comedic writer, performer, and podcaster. I live in Los Angeles with my husband, Scott, and my dog, Rocky. It was a surprise to me when I found out you were Asian five years into our relationship. How did you find out? Um, I just know there were little clues. Mm -hmm. I have amazing friends who are like my family. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Sarah, you're the best. I love you. It's a pretty good life. Okay, in many ways, I don't know who I am. I know who I want to be. And my hang up is that how can I know who I am if I don't know who I come from? And I have a huge hang up around uh, the story. When we first met, it was a subject that was obviously the source of the most pain in your life. You know, I call that like my origin story <laughs> in the true tradition. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, comic book heroes normally have these tragedies as their origin stories. I mean, Superman, his real mom and dad blew up. Batman, his mom and dad were killed in a robbery. The only exception is Cyclops. His <laughs> origin story is he has to wear cool sunglasses. So that's not so bad. Yeah. Your origin story is that you found out on that terrible night that the man that you thought was your father wasn't actually your father. 
and that your real father had abandoned you is just so inherently tied up in who you are as a person. It's just such a big part of your life and something that has been really hard for you to move past. I always thought I was Peng's daughter. And in my memory, he was always there. He's the one who pulled my mom across the Mekong River when they escaped to Thailand. He was the one who put her in the inner tube and swam her across. And it was him who came with my mom to Washington, D.C., where I was born. And it was Pang who lived with the Danielsons with me and my mom in those early years. But that's not the case. There was a feeling after I found out my dad was my real dad, and I realized that all of the adults knew that I was a fraud. I felt like, oh, that's the reason why people treated me differently. I felt like an outcast. And I felt betrayed. It made me stop trusting. It made me stop trusting my parents. I just felt like everybody lied to me. And because I couldn't remember what happened, and I had filled in the blanks in my own head. It made me stop trusting myself. Come on, come on. It also, to me, crystallizes my problem with my mom. That she has, like, no problem saying awful things to me to hurt me. I didn't ask more questions because that whole event was very painful to me. I was 14, that's a crazy age anyways. And to have found out that way, and to have been rejected that way, I just, I couldn't take it. I just, I, I just, I really did just, I buried it. It, it doesn't stay buried, it comes up. And I'm still very angry about it. It fucking sucks, I hate this, I really do. This is really hard on me. Scott and I started dating when I was 19. I'm 33 now. And I just feel like it's time for us to mix our bits together and make a baby. <laughs> Let me find a different way of saying that. Um... Do you think I'll be a good mom? No doubt. You're already a good mom to every one of your friends, including me. And I mean, until you can be the mother you dream of being to yourself, you can't be that to another person. I say that as a totally barren person <laughs> who has no kids and lives a very frivolous, <laughs> whimsical life. Barren. I've definitely, while being pregnant, I've thought a lot about my mom. And it's amazing how much comes up when you're thinking about motherhood and entering into it, about your own relationship with your mother. My relationship with my mom I think she just kept trying to break me, and I wouldn't. My mom beat me up as a form of punishment up until I was like eight or nine when I called the cops on her. 
And that's when the manipulative mental abuse got turned up. Well, I know you've always been afraid that you are going to be what you think is a bad mom, that you're going to make the same mistakes that your mother made. There are so many unknowns in my past that I want to know before I embark in being a mom. That means just trying to clear up my issues about who I am or who I come from. And my mom and dad are the only people that can get me closer to some semblance of truth. I am very uncomfortable um, with the mere idea of asking my parents these questions. I have barely spoken to my dad. I am not speaking to my mom. I had to get out of Minnesota, away from my family. I took it, I came to LA, and now I'm going back there to Minnesota to try to get some answers. My parents are separated. Theirs was a marriage that should not have been because they fought all of the time and they were vicious fights. Often I would find myself in between them. Your mom would call up and say, your dad's having an affair and just unload on you all the details about it and then make it your problem to deal with. A Couple of months would go by and then your dad would call you and say, mom is gambling again and she's stolen all of our money. It was almost like it was your responsibility to keep the family together. separation divided our family. My baby sister Alyssa lives with our dad. And my mom lives with Anita and her boyfriend Paul and my nephew. Hi. What do you say? Thank you. Welcome. This is my dad in Pang. In is the king of gods. And Pang means to fix. I'm nervous about talking to my dad about our family issues, especially my adoption. He's a very private person, and we haven't talked about him not being my biological father since the night I found out. I don't want to offend him or make him feel like I'm in any way being disloyal. OK, can we talk about the decision can we talk about the decision not to tell me? The truth? Mm -hmm. It was mine. I was going to tell you sooner or later, but I want to wait you till you grow up older, more mature, so you can take a note and she let it out before. But what I think I'm going to tell you. Can we talk about that night? She always tried to find a way that people see that I'm wrong. That's why she tried to hurt me, hurt my feeling. She's using you. 
and tell you the truth because you uh, defend me against her, you know. And she told me that things gonna hurt me and hurt you. Then I finally explained to you that how you and me is uh, relate, you know. Tell you that you, Anita and Lisa, I love you guys equally, you know. Uh, all three of you is all my daughter. It doesn't matter if you are my real daughter or not. It's still my daughter. I raised you since you are three years old. Mostly. <laughs> so. It's okay, Dad. It's okay. Can you talk about the decision to adopt me? The reason that I, the adoption going on is uh, your mom's idea. I didn't even know that she does it until she bring all the paper home. And uh, she explained to me why. Because she wants you to have a father. So I said, she already have father. Why she want a father? I don't want him to come around and see her anymore. He's a bad guy. That's what she told me. Do you remember do you remember what she said about him? Like why he was a bad guy? Do you remember? What she said is uh your dad's go around, you know, uh, fool around with the girls, some of the girls, but I don't believe it. The reason is you want to hurt your father, won't, let, won't allow him to see you and won't let you see him. A lot of times he ain't come I mean, and even though I'm with your mommy, he's come over, you know, knock on the door. But your mom scream at him, he's just run. She do everything, try to uh, prevent him, him to see you. You know, lie to you, lie to me. She she know that where your dad, where your dad is. Even your dad's, uh, your uncle, your dad's brother, try to talk to you. She just prevent them. them you know, I have them. uncles. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I don't understand my mom. I don't get why she keeps. Thank you. <laughs> you Love you too. All this time, my mom has been lying to me. For 20 years, there was this whole other family that I, I could have known. Who is my biological father? I don't even know his name. I don't know what he looks like. I've never seen a photo of him. Growing up, I had two birth certificates, each with a different last name. One said Vilaisak, and one said Sanabongsai, which is my mom's maiden name. She said it was a clerical error. Okay, I got it. My biological father's name is Tavi Sak Sanabongsai. Why does he have my mom's last name?
hello? Huh? Hello. Um, hi, my name is Kulap. Huh? Um, um, my name is Kulap. Uh. Um, can I been on, um, Luke, uh, Bopet and Tavisak? Oh, Kulap, huh? Do I? Oh, hi, yeah, Luke. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let me see you, Kulap. I miss you a lot, baby. You do? Oh, my God. <laughs> my niece. Finally, God bless. Yeah, how tall are you now, Kulap? <laughs> I'm only 5'5". Five, 5'5"? Five. Five, five? Yeah. Oh, not too bad, though. You are a woman. I, I am. I'm 33 years uh, old. No, so that's why I can claim you back to be my daughter. So. <laughs> Do you remember in 1994? Did you and I talk? Oh, we talked together before. Did we in 1994? Does that sound familiar? Yeah, okay. When I found out my mom had me talk to an uncle when I was I was 14 years old. And uh, we were, baby. yeah. Yeah, your mom called me. She didn't visit me. She just visit and go to take in Mother Lake. Oh, okay. I live with you guys. Yeah, long time, but uh, you don't remember. You're too little. I was too little. Yeah, I called your dad uh, the other night. No, no, no. I tell, I tell your dad, I give your, I, I give your son to your dad already. Okay. I'm on my way to see my sponsor family, the Danielsons. They're the only other people I know who knew my biological father. Out of everyone involved, including myself, I trust Uncle Ron and Aunt Julie the most. As a family, we became aware of the, the need for sponsors for refugee families, especially from Southeast Asia. During the Vietnam War, there was also a secret war in Laos. The US dropped more than 2 million tons of ordnance, equal to a plane load of bombs every eight minutes, 24 hours a day, for nine years, making Laos the most heavily bombed country per capita in history. When the Americans withdrew from Laos in 1973, hundreds of thousands of refugees fled the country without much more than their lives. Sponsors were either an organization or a family or an individual who agreed to provide shelter and living conditions for a refugee family. So we talked about it and uh, together decided that um, we would do that. It was a teaching moment for our boys that life is bigger than just your own life, that you need to extend uh, to other people, and especially in a situation where people were being forced out of their native countries and had nothing. As Americans, we're privileged. There was it, summertime when you came. It was summer. It was so, so it was hot. was pleasant, but it was pleasant. You know, it was not the shock of coming to well, winter. in the winter, right. It was probably July mm -hmm. when they came, because you were just about, just two months old, yeah. Um, you could kind of describe um, my mom a little bit. 
especially for me, like even how she looked back then and, and her, more of her personality. Mm-hmm. Um, from a male perspective, I thought she was a very attractive young lady because she was only 18, I think, at mm-hmm. that time when she came. She was a, a very pleasant person to have in the household, to, just very much so. Was very helpful around the house and smiled very easily. She was very at home in the kitchen. She migrated to that and wanted to cook. Mm-hmm. We set up a system where I could take care of you during the day. And that way they could just learn to be um, here in the States because it is so different culturally than it was for them. And I'm trying to think about sock too, Tavi sock. Oh, and that was a picture we had all taken together. That was your family, your mom and dad. And... This is the first time seeing my father. It's so strange to look at my father. Mm-hmm. I look, a, I think I look a lot like him. <laughs> you do. I think you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you sure do. You really do. I look so different from everyone in my family. I'm finally seeing a true resemblance to someone. Dad was a very quiet spoken person. I thought he was a very handsome man. Very nice looking man. Yes. Um, he did a lot of fishing. He would fish. That's the first time we ever ate carp because carp is not considered a delicacy in Minnesota. But the way your mom fixed it. Oh man. It was delicious. They took that carp and your mom cooked it. It was fantastic. relationship it's very complicated and I don't I don't think I'll ever be able to understand it sometimes I felt like why wouldn't you want to talk to your mom that's your mom but you know you have your own reasons and I felt bad for mom because all she wanted to do was talk to you I know my mom loves me, but it's very transactional. Like right now, there's no doubt in my mind that she's not talking to me because I didn't give her money for her latest gambling debt. I mean, when did you realize mom had a problem with gambling? It was definite that she had a problem when she she asked me for money. When I was just in college and she wanted to use my school loan money, I remember calling you about it and like saying like mom's like threatening me or blackmailing me and like telling me to like get or give back the things that she bought me as gifts and she would always say like you don't appreciate me or whatever I work so hard you know why can't you just give me the money I'll pay you back. Now, if you have companies coming, bye-bye. This is Joe Bear calling from Green Town Now. If you have companies coming, bye-bye. Now, if you have companies coming, bye-bye. This is Joe Bear calling from Green Town Now. 
Did you have confidence to call me? Bye bye. About talking to my mom, I'm very like curious how it's going to go. I don't, I don't even know how I want to approach it. I, I've, there's so much to talk about. I, I would have to think that it's got to be, I would think, somewhat of a relief for her, for her to not have to like pretend anymore about my birth father. I would hope that she would be like my dad, and when I put the camera in front of him, and he just had to testify, he had to confess, he had to share. I would hope that is what my mom will do too. Just like, get it off your chest. Like, I'm 33 years old, I'm an adult. Let's just say, just put it out there and, and, and be like released of it. Jonathan. Jonathan. Andrew's coming in in a second. Yeah, I'm the bitch. I'm the mom. Oh. I'm the <laughs> I'm the dick and that's me. That's how I am. <laughs> My mom's name is Boa Pet. Boa means lotus and pet means diamond. Well, I just sit down and eat them. Oh, I don't know if we're hungry yet, Mom. It's pretty early, don't you think? Well, I thought you guys were going to come to eat. Yes. Yes. <laughs> good to eat. You need help? No. Okay. <laughs> I guess we're going to eat. Then. You lose a lot of weight. Thank you. <laughs> I'm trying. When you're going to have a baby. Soon. You know, 35, your age will be... Well, you know that I'm turning I mean, it doesn't matter, but... But, you know, I'm going to be 34, though. Does that yeah. change? <laughs> but there's what a... do you want to know? <laughs> I want to... Um, I don't know. What will you tell me? I mean, all the thing I heard, what I tell you, you said it's a lie. Well, it's a lie. What did I lie? Wow. No. Well, maybe no, no. I lied back then. Maybe I just want to protect you. Yeah, maybe I want to know just kind of what, what you know, what happened. Yeah, I'll I'll tell the truth. Please, I love that. Mm -hmm. oh, super. <laughs> what do you want to know? Just you want me to start from my life. So when a kid, it's very small and. When I was growing up from kindergarten to middle school, my job's only study. My father is very strict. He's head of the city, the education and all that. I speak three languages already, Thai and then French. I mean, in Laos. But I read a lot and in French and in Thai, I got influence. There's some, something out there. I want to see the world, and I don't want to be in the city where I was born. 
And then the communists took over, I think it was 1975. How old are you at that point? 15, 16. 15. How, how many siblings did you have at that Ten. point? At that point, ten? Yeah, I'm the oldest. I cook, I clean, I kill the duck, I kill the pig, I kill the chicken, feed them every day. And I'm tired of doing all that, and that's why I left. I just took off to Vientiane. Pretty much I was run away from home. My father had a lot of friends at the co-educational in Vientiane, you know, at the capital. Somebody gave me a paper. They kind of family and all that. I want to go to med school. Did you, like, forge signatures on yeah. the paper? Did you lie and say you were older than yeah. you? Yeah, I was okay. lying. Yeah. You know, I'm only 16 and never graduate. Yeah, because you would graduate. And then they said, OK, go yeah. to med school. I got to med school, and that's when I met your dad. It was my birthday in Uncle Ron and Julie's. 19, my 19th birthday. It's just not even a year I come to America. It's your third birthday, look at it. Do you remember your mom? Do you remember yeah, her face? I remember, okay. I miss her. I still dream about her. Yeah. Mm, my mom had me when she was 16. I just was born in the toilet. And... What? She didn't even know she's gonna have a baby. She just went to the toilet. And I came out, I'm only seven months. I'm lucky I was still alive. I was very sick baby. Really? Okay, so wait, hold on. Your mom went to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. She had you in the toilet. Mm -hmm. You were how, how many months? Seven months. Seven months. Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty lucky, I'm pretty strong. I'm pretty feisty. Ever since I was born. You were born in a toilet. <laughs> wow. <laughs> toilet. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mom, how come we always had a hard time with each other? What do you think happened? You and I, specifically. We always argue. Growing up, I think. We are the same person. We are the same. Yeah? yeah Stubborn. I yep. I Don't want to listen. Don't like to listen, no. Bossy. Yeah. Think you know better. Yeah. Yeah. I never really felt like you liked me growing up. You were just always so angry with me all the time. I just felt like anything I did wasn't... Well, um, I, right. I want you to be perfect. I want you to be... I want you to, to be better than me, to have more life going than me. And I do the best I can. I know, Mama, I can. you're so hard. <laughs> you have so yelling so much, so much I yelling. did, I was, I changed it after I have Anita and Elsa. I did, when we were with you, I was, I was horrible back then. Well, I'm I'm not very good mom too. I don't know. There you can to tell the world that your mom is bad mom. Mom, just be nice. Yeah, just be nice, mom. That's all we want. Should you be nice, please? <laughs> don't be so. Try to make us feel guilty for you. Emotionally. Yeah, don't why tell, did I do uh, it? Don't tell us that we don't love you or care for you. Yeah, why did I always do that? Because you're an stupid. asshole sometimes. All the time. I know that. Why do you do it if you know? I like it. I don't to be an asshole. <laughs> Where should I go to school to be nice to my kid? Do you have a school for that? I think it's called therapy. <laughs> <laughs> my doctor feel. 
Yeah, mom, that's what you need. <laughs> can we go on Dr. Phil? <laughs> Why can't we go on Dr. Yeah, Phil? Yeah, can he fix us? <laughs> For you? How could you fix my mom? She's a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, it seemed like you... Everything I do is sh shed it to you guys. With your dad, even right now, you came here, you go see your dad. You never want to see me. You never want to talk to me. Well, why, Mom? What happened la last mm -hmm. this last six months, Mom? You've asked me, in the last year, you've asked me for $3,000 for your gambling. And then when I wouldn't give you that money, you said I didn't love you enough. And then when I was here last time, you bought a car after you almost got them evicted. So, yeah, yeah, that's, I have a problem with that. When you're gambling, you're sick. You should look at the tax. It's like you're asking me for drug money. What you wrote to me, if you really look at that, Mom, you if it was somebody else, you say this person needs help, and you won't get help. So no, no, I'm not like, first thing I'm going to do is come here. Let's do a quick little chart exclusive. Um, I have spoken to my birth father. Oh, wow. Cool. This is huge. I know. Wow. Um, and I'm going to Laos. Hello? Hello. Oh, here we go. Hi. Hello. Hi, this is Cool Up. Yes. Yes. You have to hear the other sides of the story, you know, because as much as you want to be upset at him, maybe there's some explanation for what happened. You're retracing your formative years to help you figure out your life. You kind of got to go to, to, to where it all started. I mean, not really well. Okay. Okay. Savidi. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, like see, that's good. Well, what do you? I mean, what do you think about me going to Laos, basically just to meet him? I'm like, what is your? That's good. You and your father finally meet. See him. That's your father. He you knows he's a bad guy. Everything you know. Really? Very much. Yeah. You know, I didn't know. I thought my dad was my dad until I was 14. I didn't know. I didn't remember. I think because it didn't. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. Oh, man, I, 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 I was carrying you with me all the time. Your mom let me, and after all, that, uh, okay, she wants you, you. Uh, we did so I, I decided to be with her. Yeah. Not to have more fun with her. Just emotionally, I'm worried about you being there by yourself, because who knows what you're going to find when you get there. Okay. And your sisters. Oh, wow. Three sisters? One is in California. Wait. You, the first one. I the one The third one is The fourth one is Oh, wow. Three wives. Three wives that have all this. Oh. So what do you think about me going to Laos? Why you, I don't understand why you have to why you have to do it now yeah now and well she's trying to close a chapter to create her own family that's true that's really well put um it's something i've been thinking about and then i got pregnant um at the You're end pregnant? of yeah i was pregnant you lose a baby i did lose a baby oh why do you tell me we weren't talking 
It's all right. I really want you to have a baby. But there's a big part of my past that I don't know about, you know? And that's what this is about. I'm gonna come visit uh, you. I'm coming to Laos. You're coming to Laos? Yes. Oh, what? What? Vientiane after 27 hours of travel. Vientiane is the capital of Laos, and it's where my biological father and his family live. This is my third time here, and it's the first time I'm without my mother. It's a new experience of being here on my own. I don't really have much of a relationship with the country. If anything, growing up, sometimes I felt like I was rejecting Laos and the culture. <laughs> As an adult now, I would really like to find a way to feel connected to my heritage. Starting to sink in uh, as to what, what I am doing here, which is to meet my father. here. He is at our hotel. Um, I'm surprised because he's brought his his uh, current wife and my three half sisters. So we're gonna bring him first. And then I don't know what. I'm kind of panicking. I'm panicking a little bit. I feel a sense of panic and anxiety. It's this weird thing because I want him to be really excited to see me, but I also don't want him to be too affectionate because I don't know him. And I don't know how I will react. I don't know if he's a good guy. I don't know if I'm gonna like him. I don't know if he's gonna like me. Am I gonna look at him and, and see myself? Am I gonna look at him and feel a great love? Is he just gonna be some dude? Do you know? Like, is he just this, this dude? I guess I would just hope he's completely honest with me. Yeah. It's 
Oh, and oh, right? No, well. <laughs> oh, gulab. I look different. Look too different, eh? <laughs> Look, I was young. I was, I was. <laughs> How old are you? Fifty-nine. Oh. oh. I have this, this, this one at home. You do? Yeah. Your mom was cute. It's all the people at my wedding. Mm. Nice. Where was it? Los Angeles? Mm-hmm. At the train station. My sisters. Anita, Alyssa. This is? My mom. Who's this guy? That's my dad. Oh, Ben. Yes. Are you, are you coming with me to see Pandan? Sure, I told you. Yeah, can you go tonight or do you go tomorrow? Tonight is okay? Okay. Maybe sure. a, a call. So we have more time. Yeah. Okay. We can go? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. I don't feel anything for him yet. He's still someone I don't know. But it's nice. It's nice to meet him. It's it's all very nice. It's nice to meet his family. I just know that at some point he's going to ask me for something. And that's gonna bum me out, but that's more about sort of a Lao cultural thing. It's more about maybe even beyond a Lao culture thing, just that's how my mom is with me. That seems shitty, but I expect that. But that's fine because I can say no, it's all up to me. It's just is like, I know it's on its way. But I could be surprised. Sea Pandan is where my biological father is from. It's a collection of small islands in the Mekong River at the southern tip of the country. The plan is to leave from Vientiane, drive all the way down to Sea Pandan, then head back. We're gonna stop at Savannakit, where my mom's family's from, and then maybe see some sights. Are we going? Have I set this itinerary to have some control of a situation that I literally feel insane about? Yeah. mention you to, to them, you know, your sister Gulabs. 
I just didn't know where you are, you were. So somewhere in America. Yeah, yeah Minneapolis or So will you show me where you're from? I'm from Don Sangpai. And uh, no. here they are country, country people. They don't have anything much, only raise the uh, kid, raise chicken. Everybody is fishermen. Are you a good fisherman? Oh yeah, I love I love to to to, to, to fish. Yeah, I was a good one. Yeah. Yeah, get a lot of fish. Um, okay, so you're the youngest. You have three brothers. One sister. One sister. Yeah. And how many? Actually, my family had ten children. Oh. But they died. Five of them died. Why? Yeah. Oh. Well, you know, they they no host good hospital at the time. You know, they died when they when they uh, what you call that were born first first day or second day or sometime. 10 years, 15 years, they die. You moved to, to Vientiane when uh, you were how old? 13 years old. 13 years old. Mm -hmm. I went to, uh, to Vientiane to live with my brother. Why? Because I didn't want to stay in Ireland and being fisherman, you know? What did you want to be? No, no, at the time I studied to continue my, uh, my education. And you know, like it's getting college and go to um, medical school. Is it safe to say that you just wanted a bigger life than what the island yeah, yeah, yeah. could true, true. give you? Of course, yes. Could you imagine they, they, they do this by hand? They make a pond and everything by yeah. hand. <laughs> Unbelievable. I feel very powerful here. Right? Yes. I guess now we can start talking about when you met my mother. Okay, your mom now. My mother, Bua Pit, <laughs> Sana Long Sai. <laughs> Sana Long Sai, yes. <laughs> From Savannah Kid. <laughs> okay. I, I, in that time, no, I met her and I, I was almost graduate from, from the place I studied. No? And she just gained my, her first freshman, her first, first, first year. I met her because we, we we working in the school. We met just like a couple months and then my mom died. Why did she die? T ten kid diabetic. And then my father told me to go back home. He's already lined up a man for me to get married to raise all that ten kid. And then your dad, he said, well, should we leave the country? Are you guys like, you're just like friends? Yeah. You just sort of know each sort other. Sort of know each other. Communist countries, uh, very strict, strict rules. You gotta do what they want you to do. And you don't have any freedom. And by that time, it's already dangerous for us. They put young kids in the concentration camp. Couple of my guys in med school just disappear overnight. My brother tried to persuade me to escape. I went to my friend's uh, classmate. I said, I need two tires. We wait on the bank of the McKenna River until it's dark. I told her to take her clothes off. And then I start swimming. 
the body float in the Mekong River. Hundreds of body float. People die because people try to cross to Thailand. It was so stupid. Some soldier probably hiding in there. It's a good thing they didn't see us. We will be dead. Same, same, little by little. We strong current help a lot. I thought I was gonna die, and then we're over the corner where you're dead, just swimming, and I'm on the tour. And then uh, we slept on the shore of Thailand until early in the morning next day. Two days, we got to the camp of Ubon. We have to be married in the Ubon camp. Thai people, you say, oh, it's your wife. They don't want to touch. So we pretend that we were husband and wife. He used my last name. He doesn't have a last name. Sana Wong Sai. Nothing romantic or anything like that because you are in a dangerous situation. At that time, we didn't think anything else but our life. You guys were in the camp for three months total. Right. When did it become romantic between you and mom? We got married a lot traditional in the camp. When I first got married, I got pregnant right away, and I said, I cannot raise a kid, and I have abortion in the camp. Who, who did that for you? Him. Oh my God, are you serious? We do it in our cell in the camp. Oh my God, are you serious? I don't know. I'm How did you do it? it? How did you do it? I just lay there and his friend and him and are you serious, take it Mom? out. Yeah, abortion. Okay, so were you pregnant with when me? When I come to Washington, D.C., first thing that they have us check for physical and everything. Make and sure then they said I was it. five months pregnant. You had no idea. I have no idea. Although it was never spoken to us, you know, one of the, the stories that comes out is that if you're a single person in a refugee camp, the chances of being sponsored are less. If you're a married couple, they tend to increase. And if you're a married couple with a child, they even increase more. And so bonds were created out of necessity. The first country in the world people want to go to is uh, America. We think that we're going to have a better life. We, we thought that we're going to make it, so we trusted in America. Rao culture in general, lots of people, they grow up poor, they die poor. But in America, you can always change your class. If you're born poor, you can die rich. And you just have to work hard. If you come earlier, then probably you will end up aborted. I would also be able to. <laughs> my mom's family in Savannah Kit. I've really settled into this like easy breezy Lao lifestyle. I feel really happy to be here. I really like it here. เออสักเกียร์เออสักเกียร์เออสักเกียร์เออสักเกียร์เออสักเกียร์เออสักเกียร์เออสักเกียร์เออสักเกียร์เออสักเกียร์เออสักเกียร์เออสักเกียร์เ
loving and affectionate feelings, soft feelings towards my mom. Um, and I'm, and that, that's a good thing. Both my grandfather and my grandmother are in the stupa. My mom wasn't able to visit him to come for the funeral or any of the celebrations. And um, I think that really broke her heart. She wasn't at her mom's funeral, and she wasn't at her father's funeral. It was 1979. Our plane landed in Washington, D.C. It was cold. There's people from the church would come and take us to buy a shoe. My first shoe was I bought a boot, a high heel boot, but nice. I saw it. I want that. I was pregnant with you, but I wear oh. it. I don't care. It would be get tennis shoe. No, I'm getting boots. <laughs> <laughs> Running with the bus. No, I, I remembered. And you're pregnant at this time. I was pregnant and I go to school. And your dad, too, we both study English. And then, um, that's how I find out a lot of things about your dad. One day we just wake up. I was six, seven months pregnant with you, and we don't know what to do. We just want to walk, and then we walk from Washington, D.C. to Maryland. That's how we got to know. And wow, we, that's when you started to get to know each other. You get to know, and we try to bond in Washington, D.C. and all that. We have you. In the hospital. It May 11th. May 11th. 1980. Was... The greatest day of your life. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> because um, it was one, only one girl was born on Mother's Day. Some roses and some stuff, and then the nurse keep asking what's going to name her and all that. I love roses. I said, cool up, and it just come out. It was good to talk to her because this reminded me, she was like really young when she had me. I can't imagine what it was like to get an abortion in a refugee camp. She's had a lot of loss in her life. And I know she has a lot of regrets too. I think there's a lot of guilt that she left her siblings behind to make another life for herself in America. She's lived and survived a lot. I just wish like we could enjoy each other without the specter of like her gambling or her asking me for too much emotionally, financially, of course, for the gambling. I wish we could just like get to know each other. She's really fun and funny when she's like in a good place. Take one interview with uh, Jack. <laughs> they call me Jack. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> a few names that I tell you. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna go. Through. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about your names. Uh, no. We need to start from beginning. Just, just names. To okay. Uh, you were born with what name? With uh, uh, Long Long Min, the wind. No. That's it. Okay, and then when did you change it? When I moved to Vientiane. Mm -hmm. My cousin, 
just gave me a new name. Uh, why not change from Lom to Tavisa? Okay, and then you you changed your name again. Uh, my friends in America, they call me, they don't call me Tavisa, hard for them. They say, hey, Saki, they just like teasing. Yeah. They stay teasing, hey, Saki, man, Saki. Okay, Saki is good for me. I said, I, I'm <laughs> Saki. <laughs> <They're> Saki. <laughs> so I hired an attorney. I want to change my whole name because uh, my wife left me already, so nothing to do with Sana Sana anymore, right? Uh, and where's Jack come from? <laughs> Jack. Jack from, from, I mean, when I came to Laos, when I see foreigners, I want them to call me just simple. So it's like a nickname, basically. Yeah, nickname. In, in some of your emails, though, um, the name of the email is D. Darisak. Or oh, Darasak. That, yeah, what? <laughs> What's oh, that boy. about? <laughs> I, you know, when it's mostly, uh, Okay, especially when I see many females, huh? not lady, females, I, I, tell, I tell them different names. So they, they don't get me easily. <laughs> no, it's not me. Somebody else. Not, that's not my name. <laughs> One boat takes five people. Oh. Okay. And uh, cost 90,000 feet. Per, for one boat? One boat, yeah. It's about ten dollars or twelve dollars. That's not bad. I, I I can afford that. I'm I'm doing okay in America. I want you to know that. <laughs> I mean, I can't help you at, in any way, <laughs> but I can do a dolphin ride. <laughs> this is my gift. <laughs> okay. I fear that. Saki will ask me for money. Uh, so, like I do with everyone, I, I try to try to joke about it and make things light. Um, and me just saying it like that as a joke, as probably an improper joke, uh, completely freed me to being present. <laughs> It's really helped me to be okay. When did it go wrong with you and mom? Oh. What 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 happened? If we didn't have to move to different area or location, probably we didn't have a problem. But who knows? Uh -huh. But I thought, okay, it was wrong that uh, we moved out from from Uncle Ann's family. When we moved to Minneapolis, we met all the Laotian people. That's when your dad starts growing around. Oh, boy. Her name is Debbie, and then um, they have a party or something. We go in there, and then she speaks Laos. She told me, oh, I slept with your husband. Your husband have a big dick. 
Oh, shit. Yeah, she just told me that. Okay, I said, okay. Oh shit! Yeah, it was in. I mean, all in front of Laotian and oh, everybody. Oh shit! She's American white girl. In Bang, has relatives next to the same floor, next to our rooms. I knew. Okay, I knew that she. They are having. They were having a, a affairs. And I just told him to get out because I'm not sleeping around with anybody. Her name is Debbie. When I say the name Debbie. Debbie's after. Not only Debbie after that. Not only the Debbie. <laughs> I'm telling you. And I'm a man, I'm a man. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> he went to live with his fa his family. I moved upstairs to live with my brother. I take you to Aunt Julie, you living with Aunt Julie, and I living in my cell in there. When your mom wanted to get a divorce, one first thing I thought, okay, you must be with uh, Uncle Ran and Julie. And she agreed with that. Your mom showed up at our front door. Doorbell rang, we went to the door, and there was your mom with you. She just held you out and said, take her, I can't take care of her. She had your suitcase there and just set it in, and she was gone. Up was probably what one, one and a half. I suppose. Uh, well, I don't think she was quite that old, though. Not a year. Yeah, you know, something like that. Yeah. And that began. You're living with us 24/7 until you were about four years old or three and a half, four years old. This is the first time I'm hearing about this. I, I don't remember. I don't remember any of this, and it's making me upset. It was so fun to be able to have you when you were a little baby. And this is gonna be the hard part <laughs> because I get rather emotional about that. You were just part of our family. They just loved you like a sister. <laughs> you thought of them as your brothers. This was just a special time for me. Even I, I would cry when you live in Angoran and Julie. I would cry, I miss you every night. And almost no contact with your mom during that period of time. You were about four years old, or three and a half, four years old. It was February before she was gonna be four. And the next day we were leaving on that trip to Hawaii, and it was just after dinner time. I was cleaning up in the kitchen and the phone rang. And it was your mom, and she said, um, I'm coming to get cool up. I believe you were already in bed and didn't have any organization of getting your things ready to go. So I said, um, could you wait until we got back? Because we hadn't heard from her for so long. So um, I thought maybe she could wait for one week. She said, no. She said, I'm coming tonight. And if you don't agree, I will call the police. So I got you up and we, um, I, we just left you in your pajamas, I think. And, got all your things packed that we had, and she came and grabbed you and was gone. It, it was a, such a void for a long time. For quite a few months, I would just wonder how you were doing. I, I was just concerned that everything was going OK. Did you know when, my, when mom came and got me again? Did you know? Were you? I knew. I knew you did know. I knew, but... I don't want to get in this fight, you know? I cannot afford to do it. Well, how long was I with them? You dropped me off. It's like a f four or five months. And Julie and Karan say it was years. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Why, I didn't know. But why didn't you come and visit? <laughs> I don't know where you were. Let me tell you what happened okay. when I found out about you. Then no place to go. She said, talk to your father's brother. 
My birth father told him not to talk to me because he was worried that I would want money from him. Who told you that? It, I don't know if it was my mom or someone. I don't know. That was very painful for me <laughs> because I didn't know what was happening. And then a man who I've never met before, as told to me, completely rejected me. <laughs> In my mind, because I don't know any difference. I, I can only take what someone's telling me, right? So in one fell swoop, I found out the father who, by the way, I thought it was, I looked like and was most like. We get along. I get along better with Inping than I do my mom. And I thought I looked more like him than my mom. Okay. But he's not my father. And my two little sisters who I've raised, like they're my daughters. They're my half-sisters. And one, my life changed completely. Everything that I remembered... I'm sorry, man. Sorry. Everything that I remembered sorry. was not true. And Aunt Julie and Uncle Ron knew, and people who I grew up with, they knew, and I didn't know. And then the person that left me behind, I was told, didn't want anything to do with me because they were afraid that I would want money from them. Just like that. And that is a pain that I've held on to since then. I don't blame you. I'm sorry. But somebody in your family knew where I was at. And I understand that everybody makes choices and everyone did the best that they could with what they have. But I have a hard time believing that nobody knew where I was. And I accept it. I can't change the past. I can't wish it to be different. As you said, I'm very, as you said, if I hadn't seen Uncle Ron, then I wouldn't be at the Gulab now. If I hadn't gone through everything that I've gone through, then I wouldn't be who I am now, who I, and I like me now. But it's hard for me to hear that I could not be found. And I know it's nothing you can do, it's just... Ah, oh, that's my phone, so... I'm sorry. I know he said he was sorry, but I don't understand what he's sorry for. Like, I, I don't know what he's apologizing for. I, I, it just feels unsatisfying. I think what I thought after I told him my origin story, he would either admit to or deny certain aspects of it. I thought he would say yes or no, I told, my brother not to talk to you. Uh, yes or no, I did it because I was worried you wanted money from me. I thought I could get him to admit that I was easy to find. I went to the dad who raised me, I went to the Danielsons, I went to my mom, I went to my bio dad. Really, did I come here all this way to realize that the answers are inside of me? Like, that's bullshit. Like, I wanted him to fill in the answers. I think for me, being enough has always just been a good idea. And it's kind of a, 
like just me because I don't know if I in life ever feel like just me is enough so and I think I put it on them a lot but that 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 would be an issue when it's probably more of a cool up thing than anything to wrap my mind around. After seeking him out and going to Laos and finding out that he will essentially be following me back to California, the best case scenario of my father and his family moving to Sacramento is that we could see what this new family dynamic will be. We are very happy you're here to meet with you and, uh, and hopefully we can get in touch to one another in, in America. And I'll, I'll call you or write your email okay. and update you. Yeah. You write me too sometime, huh? Hmm? You write me too? Yes. Yeah, say something. How do you feel? Uh, I feel like this was a trip of a lifetime. Uh, so much has happened, you know? Right. I wonder if I'll ever meet Amy. I'm so glad I did this, though. I'm so glad I came. Oh, you're so emotional. <laughs> <laughs> to talk about. It I don't sure even is. know where to begin. Woo! Cool up. I like what I'm seeing. What are you seeing? It looks like a shirt. It is a shirt. Wow, this is awesome. Beer Lao. This is the beer of Laos. And it is a bro tank, and I will wear it all summer long. <laughs> this is fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> Still at number three, American Authors with Best Day of My Life. Thank you. 
episode 352 of Ooh, Charted, where we discuss the charts in pop culture and get to know our guests. It is the end of August. I'm okay, everybody. <laughs> in the time that I've been back from Laos after being devastated, I mean, I got taken down. There's no getting around. I was really upset with everything that happened. Yeah, it was pretty tough when you got back. He didn't turn out to be exactly uh, the greatest person. When my biological father asked me for money, it just was such a crazy request to not only put my name on a house, but then also to essentially invest in a pot farm. What really upset me was when he said that he was just trying to get to know me. I, I fell off an emotional cliff. I was upset that your father disappointed you in the same way that your mother disappointed you. Turns out they're not so dissimilar. That last email was the last time we interacted. If I'm going to have a difficult relationship, I'm going to choose to try with my mom. My relationship with my mom remains complicated. You know, I think there's an ending to the story where we become closer than we ever have and we speak to each other on the phone every day. Unfortunately, that's not our story. I do think you seem to have a little more distance and slight sense of humor and optimism, but it's not going to set you up to have some huge low. It's more just, I think, realistic. And I actually think you, it seems, and you've always been super close with your sisters, but you've gotten to see them a lot. And you guys seem to have a nice, clear understanding of your mom. Our family, Anita, Alyssa, dad, we talk about stuff now that we've never talked about. It's all out on the table. There is, for me, relief in that. <laughs> I understand my parents more. I understand the choices that they made. I can see their motivations. I can see their intentions. And it's something that until I experienced this journey, if you will, I didn't really understand. So it's a different type of acceptance, I would say than what I thought it would have for my parents, but I do accept them for who they are. And I wanna figure out something about me and you. You know, we've had such a hard relationship from day one. Um, and I wanna figure out how you and I can have a relationship that is healthy and... And I don't know how to do it, Mom. I just, uh, I don't know how to do it, but I want to try. Yeah, I mean, you cannot erase the past, but We could move forward. Video. Yeah. Scott and I are, are still trying to have a baby. We have been going into a fertility clinic and they've been helping us out. Yeah, and we got pregnant. And then we miscarried again. But that's okay. It's okay. It's okay. We'll just keep trying. I know that I am ready now to be a mom. Mm -hmm. And I think I can handle it. Yeah, I think you were scared before and now you just have the typical nerves that that we both have. 
I realized that I know what stability is because of the Danielsons, and I, I've recreated it in my home in Los Angeles with my friends, especially with Scott. It would have been the greatest gift in the world that you were with the Danielsons at that critical period. Yeah. And to just be flooded with the love that they flooded you with. Not that your mom didn't love you, of course she did. I've had a number of people, frankly, ask me when they've heard your story, like, how is Kulap so normal and bright and hopeful and, you know, such a positive person? I really am so grateful to that family. They truly are the most generous people I've ever known. One of the biggest life lessons they taught me was unconditional love. It didn't work out with Saki, and no, we're not in each other's lives, but he did lead me to a lot of family with whom I do have relationships with. I'm very close with my cousins, Banna, Susanna, and Dana. There is a photo of all of us when you were still a baby. I definitely yeah. remember you. You know, anytime I heard the name Kulab, I thought of you. And I met Amy, the other sister who grew up in California. <laughs> Just making sure it was you. <laughs> yeah, you don't know. <laughs> Hi. Hi. What's it like for you to have so many Asians in this house? I mean, it's, uh, it's definitely not um, quiet. <laughs> When you got back, it was tough, but the good part about it is you were sort of able to put all of those questions you had aside, and you started really focusing on your career, which took off immensely. You sold your first television show, which you created. In these kind of situations, you want to hide under a desk. That's a great idea. It's not, but continue. The show ran and even directed no, you're over him, right? Yeah. OK, when you're ready. You did four seasons of that, and that was incredible. It's just been amazing to see you take charge and achieve everything that you have wanted to achieve ever since you first moved here. It's been awesome. It gets better as it gets weirder. Mm -hmm. so Thank you. Me you, too. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't have the confidence to have done all that without going through what I did learning about my parents and learning about their origin stories, I know that that had to happen first. One of the greatest things that has come out of this adventure is that I feel the most connected to Lao culture than I, that I've ever been. And what makes it great is that it's, it's my way. More about not only who I come from, but where I come from. I've learned about this great organization called Legacies of War. In fact, I held an event at my house to let my friends know about the unexploded bombs that need to be taken out from Laos. I've been involved with the Lao Writer Summit, first in Minnesota, then in San Diego. And I finally found a group of people who understand what it's like to be Lao and also want to be creative as writers, as poets, as chefs, and as people in entertainment. When I found out that Gail Simone made me a character in the DC universe, I about lost my mind. It's, just, it's so cool. There is another Kulop Vilaisak. This name that's so hard to pronounce is in the DC universe, and she's a badass. And she has mech wings, and her name is Catharsis with a K. And she's Lao. An origin story is only a beginning. 
There are other stories to tell. This is me Take it or leave it When I breathe It's what I see When I'm staying This is my show, I'm in control, and now I know just where to 